Howdy, everyone. Welcome to the Writer's Showcase, episode 10, which is going to be all about Pelican this week. As if you didn't notice already all of the uh, lovely Pelican boxes. This is, uh, this is Thursday, and this is uh, as good as any other day to say that this is New Pen Day, which is a wonderful day for any pen enthusiast. So what do we have here? Let's take a look. Hi. So uh, I'm Tom from Gold Spot Pens, and I am here today to talk all about Pelican. And I wanted to uh, show you guys the new, brand new Pelican pen that I have uh, today. Just came in. Uh, so we're one of the first US uh, retailers to get this particular pen, which I am quite fond of. I think this should be pretty impressive. I have not seen it in the flesh yet. So uh, I completely have all of my expectations for this and uh, you're going to get a very honest reaction of how uh, much if this pen will impress me or not. Uh, this is one that we've been expecting for a couple months now and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, let's take a look. So each, uh, each of these types of pens comes in one of these uh, nice kind of uh, faux you know, like a leatherette sort of case. It's nice to keep with you. And we have the pen inside. So let's take a look. This is the Renaissance Brown. Let's take a look at that here. This is a M800 model. This is the ballpoint, of course. Just trying to get a nice focus in on that. So this is definitely different than what I had expected and I was I was more expecting a finish that was similar to last year's vibrant blue which was more translucent this kind of seems to be more opaque um, however this is the ballpoint which is more you know contains the the ballpoint mechanism and whatnot doesn't have as much empty space as let's say the fountain pen would but it is, it is a very lovely color, very pearlescent. It has the Parker style type ballpoint, which is a twist action here, gold trims. And as the 800 size, it's got a decent, you know, good size, good weight to it. Has a little tag on here, which is kind of annoying. Let's take that off here. So let's take a look a little bit closer here. So that material is, is quite, you know, it's, it's quite nice. It has a, um, it, you know, has a real pearl, you know, mother of pearl look to some of those, uh, those chunks in the, the, the flake here. Uh, some tones of like earthy brown with darker, you know, uh, this is, so there's warmer tones of brown and then there's also darker, uh, cooler tones in here too. So definitely a lot more, uh, solid than I thought it was going to be. Still looks really nice though, I do enjoy it. Uh, this is, um, you know, this is the, the matching style to the fountain pen, which I also brought here too, which I know many of you might be more excited to see the fountain pen than the ballpoint. So let's just put this off to the side and I'll take a look at that. We have a few other pens here, as you can see by the cases, and we'll get to those in a GIF. And where's my Renaissance? fountain pen. So this is the Pelican, you know, just outside cardboard packaging. Take a look here. Very nice presentation for the outside pen box, which lifts up to reveal that same envelope-ish sort of uh, pen pouch with the Pelican seal and an elastic band that keeps it closed shut. Take that open here. Brand new in box, has the cellophane uh, uh, cover, plastic cover on this that's on here. And of course the little tag here. And you can see here that we have, uh, it's an M800 size, fine point 18 karat, Renaissance Brown is the style color. That's what it's called here. And with this one, like I said, with like I was expecting with the 
the ball point, and like I said, like the ball point's more dense, so you're not you're not gonna have as much open space on the inside to see if this is really true, truly translucent. And as you can see with the fountain pen, it it is actually. So you can see the nib. I'm just twisting the nib inside of the cap to to show you that you could see the nib clearly, not very clearly, but all through that smokiness of the of the color of the barrel and the cap here. Big, nice, big 18 karat bicolor nib in, uh, in gold. This is the fine point model. And this is the piston filling fountain pen. So if we turn the blind cap, let's just see if we could get, if we actually could see, I apologize, it's not in, it's not coming in focus here. I'm trying to focus it. It is not, there we go. Okay, so we're focusing here. Just seeing if it's like light enough in the barrel so I could actually see the ink level, but I'm not seeing the piston much at all through here. It just seems that the cap, cap must be made a bit thinner than the barrel is because you could see it's much more lighter in color than the barrel. Which is kind of cool because I really do like being able to see the, the nib through the cap. It's pretty cool. but. You, I mean, with the vibrant blue, you were able to see the, um, you, it would be translucent enough to be able to see through the barrel and see your ink level in there. This is not so much though, but it's a very lovely, you know, very, very lovely brown. So looking at the pen posted here, it is a pretty large pen. They consider it um, oversized, as many would. It's for pretty good for for larger hands. Mine's a you know average sort of hand, nothing too crazy. But it's light enough because of the the resin material that it doesn't necessarily feel too back heavy. Like I could still manage to write with this. Although I would probably say it's much more easier to write without the cap posted. So we gotta definitely take this for a test drive. I mean, we have to, I'm sorry. It's new pen day, you have to. So what we have here is the Ink of the Year Smoky Quartz, which is a brown. And from what I know, I mean, this is something you could gather from the last few years that Pelican introduced these Inks of the Year, that there will be a matching M200 or 205 pen that's a demonstrator that will come out in this color. We were talking about it yesterday during our uh, our sales meeting. I believe that the target date is going to be sometime in July or August for that pen, which will probably be in about the 160 to 200 price point. So if you really like the smoky quartz, dark chocolate looking uh, color, look out for that M205 or 200, that'll be in that same color. But if you like your, your brown, fountain pens and are enjoying this Renaissance Brown, this is a, this is a nice pairing is for, for you as well because this is a very lovely, rich brown with that has much more than just a solid brown going on with it. Has, it's got uh, quite a few different intonations of different colors in here. So with, um, you know, it's just a crash course for anybody who doesn't know about uh, filling Pelican fountain pens is that we have the, the mechanism is all completely uh, all in one piece here. So all you'd have to do is just unscrew this blind cap and it moves an inner piston towards the front of the pen, thus expelling air through the, the feet and the nib. So what we could do beforehand to prepare for filling is we could just twist this counterclockwise. See, we're having a separation of the blind cap to the barrel. Then we could dip the nib, and I typically like to go all the way up to where the nib meets the section here, so as to cover the um, the breather hole. And then we're going to un we're going to screw in the other direction. That's what I'm doing. You're not seeing it here in the frame, but I'm screwing in the clockwise direction to bring the ink up into the pen. And what you typically would want to do is just to prime the flow a little bit, is that we're gonna turn it 
counterclockwise once we've completely turned it clockwise and just expel a little drop there. And then we blot it clean, a little paper towel action. Just make sure we got some excess ink, you know, make sure the section, the grip section is free of ink because there's, you know, it's nothing, nothing more pleasant than getting ink all over your fingers, which I kind of say half jokingly. Now let's put that aside here. We could do ourselves a writing sample. This fine point, smooth, smooth, smooth. Very nice. They always do a very good job of their quality control. Although I have seen it in the past that some are a little over polished and may have some issues with baby's bottom, which is a, a fun, cute little term for when the, uh, the tip of the nib tines um, are just over, way over polished and they don't make proper contact with the paper to allow for that immediate flow. So you get like, you get some skipping, some hard starting, and then once you hit it at the right angle, it would start flowing. But uh, this pen seems not to have that issue. So I, like I said, it happens with sometimes with some uh, Pelicans and some, uh, you know, some, some brands in general. You know, any pen in general can have this issue, especially if they're trying to really aim hard for that beautifully smooth uh, sort of finish is that they may just over polish it too much and then you have an issue with flow. But this one, this guy has no issue with flow whatsoever, just uh, inked up and ran perfectly right out of the box. So that's a really, really solid writing experience. And, uh, you know, I, I expect that, that sort of quality from Pelican. Just, in, just always works, you know, it does not give you any grief. Uh, I really also do like, detail-wise, I do like the fact that this band is split and then you have the material right, you know, beneath it here. That's a really nice, like, little finishing detail. Uh, and we have the top finial here with the little Pelican birds here, which is a cute little detail there. It's a, it's common to all of the uh, Souverain models. So we'll leave we'll leave Renaissance Brown aside here, and we will take a look at our next pen, the M four hundred, and this is in the tortoiseshell brown. A finish that had came out last year. It was a great follow up to the M eight hundred uh, Souverain eight hundred tortoise brown. That this has got the beautiful. It's it's a very standard type of pelican look. You know, you have your black cap, your gold trim, and then your, uh, your striated uh, barrel here. And this barrel has got uh, slices of uh, beautiful like cellulose acetate, I believe it is. And then, uh, and then between them is like a translucent um, uh, kind of material that allows you to see through. It, you can see the piston is about right there. So you could see through the pen in those little gaps between the material, between this, uh, this brilliantly uh, shaded type material. So the M400 is a gold nib pen. It uh, has a 14 uh, karat gold nib. And you can see the size is much different than the 800. It's, uh, the size of this is much more uh, you know, comfortable for uh, like either a man or a woman, uh, not necessarily for oversized uh, people who people like big pens or have large hands. Um, it's certainly not a mini pen either. It's it's quite a you know what you would kind of consider to be a typical size, whereas the eight hundred is you know a, a bit more uh, stately in nature here. If we take both of them here and just do a side by side of them. 
what the cat posted, let's take a look here. You're, you know, you're talking, you're talking not only a length uh, difference, but also in girth too. It's a bit thicker of a pen, the M8, M8, I'm sorry, the M800 is a bit thicker and is longer and also has a larger nib. Um, also, key difference being that this, that the M800 is a 18 karat nib, the M400 is a 14 karat nib, which writing wise is not going to be that big of a deal. Does give you a bit more softness with the writing experience, but not too much. Uh, it's it's a, it's a very minimal difference. You know, it's a significant difference in in weight between the 800 and the 400. So, and a significant difference in price, of course. You know, it's a, at least several hundred dollars between both of these models. It's uh, you know, it's it's tough to swallow, but it's one of those things where if you're going to look at the M800 as a as a pen that's kind of at the top of your collection and that you're if you're only going to be settling for one of them you know of, of a of a higher quality pen this is certainly one that i would uh look at the, M the m800 model not particularly the renaissance brown but whatever color that you prefer uh that they may come out with and i know that they're planning on coming out with which they have done in years past is a, a variety of of different special edition finishes that uh, they come and go in about a year's time and they try to um you know keep them very very fresh they don't keep them out in the market very long so it's one of those things where if you like it jump on it uh, because it may not last uh, quite long like it's like this guy's uh bigger brother the m800 tortoiseshell brown this is the 320 ruby red ballpoint pen and you see this guy is very very small it's like a pocket pen you know a little, a little wallet type purse pen Probably good for like an agenda organizer. Probably uses a, my guess would be like a D1 type size refill. I'm just opening it up just to double check here. Yep, that's the case. And these little D1 type refills, you could get them from Pelican or Monteverde, Schmidt makes them, a lot of different manufacturers make them. They're like the, I call them the classic toothpick model. Very small, low in capacity, but they fit in very tight places, which makes them uh, the go-to for mini pocket purse, multifunction pens, you name it. So this guy's cute, you know, not really my cup of tea, of course, but uh, hey, you know, different strokes for different folks. So uh, on closeout, and they're at a very affordable price right now. So if you're looking for a, uh, a good way to get into a, a nice pocket uh, ballpoint pen, I believe these are going for 129 on the website now, which I, originally they were going for well over 200 uh, MSRP. So um, that is uh, that's a good, nice little, let's say Valentine's or Mother's Day gift, which I know I've passed, but. You could always look forward to Christmas or birthdays. See, this is the 400 versus the 320. 400's much uh, larger of a size. And that's what really trips up a lot of people sometimes about these mini pens is that you see Souvron, you see, you know, 320, you see, uh, you think, okay, well, this is an expensive pen. Uh, you know, this is, probably, this is probably a good size for me. When it, but hey, you know, sometimes with these, these uh, you know, the, the, the lower, uh, you know, when you get into that 300 model, this is this is kind of a deal breaker for some people. But I know a lot of people would definitely enjoy a smaller pocket pen. Uh, and to take a look at our last Pelican of the day, I'm gonna open this big box here. This is one I haven't really featured or haven't talked about that much on. Um, on like the newsletter or like on our blog and whatnot. Uh, didn't really think it was gonna last that long. Uh, these vintage uh, models don't usually, but this is a uh, vintage M101N, and this is in the bright red model. And this, they put a little bit more effort into the packaging here with a uh, vintage style type case, vintage style label for the 4001 ink and I think this is a large uh, two ounce 
ink variety here. And I, I never like these packages because you always have to like open up the bow and everything. I just think it looks so nice just like that. So I kind of sneak the pen, try to sneak the pen out without undoing this bow. Right, this is the this is based off of an older M101 that was made some many years ago. I'll take this off. So this is the bright red, which I mean it's not very much a bright sort of color. It has like a tomatoey orange sort of color, almost as if you're looking at. Um, you know, tomato sauce, especially the way that you have the marbling, the, the lighter parts of this marbling here. So let me see if I can zoom up on here. Gold trim has Pelican engraved in a, uh, a vintage style on the top of the clip here. Germany on the other side, you see in that here. The yellow veining and, and marbling going all the way down the cap and the barrel. And you have, this is the blind cap, similar to the 800. This is an internal piston mechanism. This has got a 14 karat gold nib. The nib face itself is done in the vintage Pelican style. It's an extra fine nib. And you have a yellow translucent ink window, which is uh, very handy, although probably not 100% necessary because you see how when I'm twisting the the blind cap here I'm seeing the the piston move up and down and I could see it in the in the bright red material so not hundred percent necessary like with some of their other models that are completely opaque but it's a nice little nice little way of being able to see how much ink you have left there so the pen itself feels more um, reminiscent of a uh, of a of like let's say a 400 size than anything else. So let's compare it to a 400. So we have here the 400 and the M101N, and they are similarly in size. Cap is a bit more deeper on the M101N. Take a look at it posted here. Cap doesn't post as deep as I thought it would. It posts about as deep as the 400 does. So we have here, it's about the same size. You know, it's like a little bit longer for the M101N. Cap's a little bit longer. Pocket clip's about the same. Uh, let's see, the, um, the, the front section here, I'm just noticing this now. Front section is a solid red. It doesn't follow the same uh, red marble as the rest of the pen. That's just something, a little detail to note here. Feels pretty comfortable in the hand. Cap posts well, so no worries of that coming off there. Now, I don't have any ink in it, but it just, it, I just feel the way that the nib is contacting the paper it feels very smooth on the, at the tip there. Yeah, so that is the M101N in bright red. And this one, like I was showing you before, comes with also the uh, bottle of 4001 Royal Blue in the vintage packaging. Has some pretty um, elaborate uh, sort of boxing and packaging here. Comes in extra fine through broad in a 14 karat nib. Uh, 400 also does the same deal too. Uh, extra fine through broad 14 karat nib. And I believe we have the same for the Renaissance Brown as well with the 18 karat nib, extra fine through broad. And also the ballpoint model available for that as well. The, the brown tortoise shell has the ballpoint and rollerball model. And the Vintage 101N just has the fountain pen model uh, to match the fountain pen uh, vintage model that was available. Yeah, 
guys. So we got all of these three, three guys here today. Um, and also, too, is the, the little pocket guy here. This is the 320 ballpoint. Small, but uh, fairly convenient for those who are looking for a little purse pen, a little check writing pen, you know, pen for uh, all purposes. That's a pretty nice uh, model to go with. Um, let's see if I were to pick, let's see if I would pick uh, one of these three to be my everyday writing type of pen. I would probably recommend uh, the 400, uh, just because of the the sizing being more accommodating to my own personal grip. Uh, I do like the um, the the very um, sophisticated look of the striping on it. It's very classic, very very you know iconic of Pelican. Uh, that brown is also very iconic of the brand too. The um, the the 101 N uh, is a is a little bit of a mystery to me because you know it, it being called bright red, I would expect it to be like fire engine bright red, and this is more of like you know tomato sauce red. Uh, but uh, it is it is a very you know appealing you know vintage re release. It looks nice, uh, but uh, you know for for what it's worth, I would go with still with the uh, brown tortoise. The uh, Renaissance brown is is um, you know, being that it reminds me a lot of the vintage, um, I'm sorry, the vibrant blue. It, uh, you know, it does it does appeal to me as a very striking pen, uh, especially with that that variation of the material there, and the 18 karat nib is a beauty to write with. Uh, but uh, knowing that they had the vintage, uh, I'm sorry, the the vibrant blue, and that's something that's still available actually right now. Uh, we do have a, a price reduction on it, if you believe it or not. You could go to the website and check out the Vibrant Blue. Um, that uh, uh, Right now, we had just gotten a shipment in, and it, uh, it's a really good pickup. I would definitely look at that. Um, Without any further ado, uh, appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I uh, appreciate you if you join in and throwing down a comment and, and hanging out with us. That's awesome. You know, I look forward to doing this every week and showing you guys some new pens. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for future uh, writer showcases, if you have any particular questions, uh, if you have any um, demonstrations that you would like for me to do uh, in terms of like doing flex writing or um, you know bullet journaling or you know calligraphy, anything uh, that you would you know find interesting about writing about pens. Or if you just want me to demo a certain pen, you want to see a certain ink, you want to see a certain pen, uh, just pe feel, uh, please feel free to send me a message, leave me a comment. Uh, you know, I appreciate all just coming and just you know justifying me spending about half an hour of my of my day playing with pens, which is always a fun way to spend the uh, the day. So uh, I appreciate you guys and uh, take care and have a great day.